And welcome everyone, I hope you are doing fine today. This is Dimitri and we are going to work on the DAPS framework today. So we're going to use the Daisy mod template that DAPS made and we're going to use the DAPS framework. We're going to install both. We're going to see how what it does in the workbench and how we can use it to build our projects into it. So let's get into it. How do we do that? We're going to go to the GitHub page of Inclement DAB and we're going to create a new repository from the template. So why do we do that? This is the mod template. It's actually a GitHub template that you can use and create your own repository on your private GitHub account. So this tutorial requires a minimum knowledge about GitHub and Git. So if you are not really familiar with it, try to follow along, take a breath, it's going to be fine. So let's start. Use this template, create a new repository. We're going to call it Tuto Daisy template. All right. It's going to be a public repository. I'm going to do to public. I'm going to do create. All right, generating your repository. Okay, so we have two options now. This is my own repository. I own it, it's in my GitHub account. So the next thing I'm gonna do, depends on how confident you are with GitHub. Either you know how to clone a repository and then you will do a clone with HTTPS or SSH, or you're not really good with that and you're going to download a zip file and put it somewhere in your drive. On my hand, I'm going to use SSH I'm going to copy this link. I'm going to open uh, VS Code and I'm going to do new, I'm going to do clone git repository. I'm going to pass the link. I'm going to select my workspace somewhere I want to put that repository and I'm going to do select. So it's going to clone, so it's going to download the files into my drive at the location of my choosing. And now, as you can see, I've got my tuto daisy template. So it could be called Trader Plus, it could be to Toxic Zone, it could be called uh, My Awesome Mod, it could be called whatever you want. That's the name of your modding repository, the prefix of your mod repository. So what we're gonna do, first thing, we're going to take a quick look at the readme as you can see, we have a few instructions about how to clone, about the workbench and what to do with it. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to open a new terminal and we're going to do init.ps1, which will execute the ps1 file that will set up this template and add it into our P drive. So this video assume you have a P drive working. If you haven't, Look at my video, look at another video, or make sure you have it ready. All right, so we're going to execute this one. So I'm going to enter my mod prefix, which is going to be called tuto daisy template. But like I said, you can call it as your mod will be called. All right, it has created a junction into my P drive. So if I go check my P drive, I should see that we have the tuto daisy template. And inside we've got the script with all the files that will be modified, added, created, overrided uh, in order to create our extension. And we've got the workbench folder that is going to contain the daisy g prod, proj, which uh, is going to allow us to execute the workbench and the project.cfg, server.cfg that will allow to set up the local server we're going to start in the workbench. So if we take a quick look at uh, what's inside, let's open it. You may not have it selected uh, directly as Daisy GProg, so you cannot directly execute it. If you cannot, what you're gonna do is you're gonna do uh, choose another app. You're going to take a quick look into your PC and you're going to find it. Normally it should be in Steam apps common 
is the tools bin and workbench and you select this as the main application for executing the jproj extension all right so as you can see i've double click on it so the workbench is open i've got two folder the current directory which is the workbench directory and the work drive which is the p drive i can see my template mode with the files there i can see the workbench as well and i can do things we're going to check that a bit later right now let's focus on adding the dApps framework to it so we can use all the awesome things that has been done in it so for that i'm going back into github i'm going back to dApps, and we're going to clone another repository which is with dApps framework. All right, this is the new repository we're going to clone. Same as before, if you're not if you're not comfortable with that, you need to download the zip. If you are, please clone it, it's easier. So we're going to open a new window. I'm going to clone this one. So we're going to clone the Daisy dApps framework. I'm going to put it into my workspace on my drive. And after cloning, we're going to open it. Open. Okay, so as you can see, we've got further instruction. Feel free to read them if you need. There are additional information. I'm going to try to go straight to the point and straight to installation. So what we need to do? We're going to open a new terminal and we're going to execute setup work drive bat. As you can see, it has created a junction into the P drive. If we go take a look, we're going to see that dApps framework has been added to it. So what does it mean? Well, before we have opened a workbench, we didn't have the dApps framework. So when I go to script editor, in theory, I won't have any plugins because the plugins are in the dApps framework. If I want to, the, to have the plugins, I need to have the dApps framework. It doesn't have only the plugins, it has additional things that I will show. So what are we gonna do? We're going to close back the workbench and we're going to execute again the DZ JProj. All right, so now it's executed. You can see that we have the dev framework. So it has same as our template. It has a workbench, it has a tool add-on, and inside you can see that it has some plugins that we're going to use uh, for working on our project, which are going to facilitate, facilitate our life. So let's go to script editor. So we can have a quick review of what we're going to do with it. So as you can see now, if I click on plugin, I have new elements that will allow me to configure project, to close the game, join a remote, so join a server, build a mod, new file, open directory, open in code, find and modded file, a lot of actions. One thing I haven't talked about yet is Mikiros. In order to build mods with Dams framework, you need to have Mikiro tools installed. So I really invite you to install the tools, watch your videos for that. I may have one in stock if I have made it. If I haven't, then try to install it. All right, let's try to configure the project in order to run the server and the client directly from the workbench. So the first thing we need to do is we need to specify the path of our modding template we are trying to run, which is in our P drive. It's called Tuto Daisy Templates. I'm going to take this path and I'm going to paste it here. Then we're going to specify the launch type. So right now it's at both, meaning it will start the server, it will start the client and they will join. You can also have only start the server, which will only start the server, like it said, or only the client or the offline, which is going to be an offline mod. So it's kind of single player. It's a bit specific. I won't go too much in detail. And regarding the editor, it's 
something I haven't checked yet. So I'm not going to say anything about it. Do not say any mistakes. So check that out more if you need. We're going to keep it at both at default standard. We're going to keep it at stable. We can see that it executes the daisy diag uh, x64. So if you take a look at program file steam, stay with me, daisy. You can see we have multiple execute files. We've got the DZBE, which when you execute it will execute the game. We've got the x64 and daisy dig. The uh, main things of the daisy dig is that you can have additional debugging and additional behavior for modding purposes. That's the executor you should use when you work on project. So that's why we use this one for this project. Then we've got file patching, which will allow us to modify files without building everything. We've got delay delo generator, which I don't really know what is it. Auto close, disable mods, and port. So the port of the server, the profile folder, mission folder, p mods. So the mods of the workshop, and additional elements. So Right now, we've just set that and we should be good to go. We need to do one more thing. Let's take a look back at the P drive. So I can see that I don't have any missions or anything. Let's try to first build the mod, actually. So the mod should be built. Pressing a key. Then we're going to do launch game and we're going to see if it does anything so it's starting the game right i just want to make sure it creates the p profile and p missions yeah but as you can see we don't have anything in the uh, mission folder so because of that our server is going to say this Mission script has no main function, player connected will stay disabled. So we're gonna go back to the editor, we're going to close the game, so it will execute the task kill. And we're going to go to our server. So we're going to add some files there, so it create, uh, it start the game correctly. So for that, we're going to, we're going to go to daisy server. So let's go back to it. Common daisy server, we're going to go to MP mission and we're going to select the generous files. So select all of it, copy it, put it in mission. All right. So if obviously if you want to use another map, um, use the map file. I use generous by default, so I put the generous files, but if you use SACAL or anything else and want to configure to use another map, it's uh, possible, you just need to specify it here, I think. Yeah. All right, so now in theory, if I do launch the game again, we should have something that works better. So let's take a look. Reading missions. Yep, as you can see, it has read it correctly and it's now loading the DB. So if we wait a bit more, we should see the player get in the server. Yeah, player is currently joining from the logs. So I should have the loading script debugger is connected. So the workbench is currently connected to this instance of the game. So if we do changes or things in the future, we'll see them in the logs. Actually, the output may have stuff. Yeah, as you can see, we have some information about the game currently. All right, and as you can see, we're currently in the game. 
that we have started from the workbench. So when we work on our project, nothing prevents us from doing some changes and then using the different plugins to start the game directly, build the PPOs and such, and be ready to develop. So that's the conclusion of the first part of installing DApps framework and having our first template ready for working our project. I hope you liked it. In future modules, we'll see how to use the DApps uh, MVC system to build nice UIs, how to create your own styles, how to create your own fonts and stuff like that. So I hope you liked it. See you around.